Hello and welcome to the Lens at 177 and today we are sitting down with the Acting Commissioner of Police Juki Fong Chiu who has just finished uh, serving one year in office and uh, he has agreed to sit down and ask a few questions with us. We would say we have got a thousand questions for him but since time is not on our side we will start straight with uh, the first question sir. You have just finished your one year in office. Uh, how do you describe uh, this journey so far? Thank you Anish for the question. Yes, uh, this journey is quite challenging. You know, quite challenging in the sense that uh, the commissioner left, his duties contract to already expired, so he left. So there was a vacuum there for me to carry on this journey in the Fiji Police Force in moving it forward. Eh? And uh, it's quite challenging because I was holding the post of acting commissioner and also managing the position of Duty Commission of Police. But after a few months of as a Acting Commission of Police, I decided to appoint somebody to deputize me, to assist me in moving the organization forward. Eh? That is the reason you've noted that uh, Acting DCP Sakyo Rekavi was appointed. So it was quite challenging. Mm -hmm. But so far, after 12 months of carrying the organization forward, myself and the members of the organization, we have endured all the pressures that came our way internally, externally, and we're still progressing. Mm -hmm. It will take time. Challenges will come our way, but we'll do the best that we can to serve the members of the community out there. Mm. Tell us about the day. Uh, I know you must have been in the office uh, uh, waiting for the call to come. Uh, mm. Did you expect the call to come from the minister that you are being appointed the acting compol? But prior to being appointed, uh, there were ongoing discussions. And uh, I heard that my name popped up in those discussions, but uh, I kept it to myself because I know there were other senior officers that is there that were already in the limelight but I was not in the limelight but I kept it to myself but when uh, the call that was made and uh, the appointment letter was given to me it was quite a su surprise there eh? and uh, I told myself yeah this is the way to go I'm a career police officer they've appointed me I have to take it as a challenge mm -hmm. What, what did those senior police officers think of the appointment then, of you? Those senior officers, maybe, I'm not really sure, maybe they were wanting or the position, but uh, I left it, uh, the process to take its course, eh? because I don't want to speculate that since I, my name has been discussed, I will get the position. Mm -hmm. I let the process take its course and finally they've appointed myself as the acting commissioner of police. Uh, and, and, and have those senior officers fallen in line? Uh, do they respect the chain, and, chain of command? In any organization, especially the Fiji police force, eh, they are usually a command and control. Eh? When somebody is appointed the, to take the organization as the head of the organization, you know, you the officers should their loyalty is to the chair, not to the person. Because the time will come, I'll exit. Yeah. So officers that is below me should respect whoever that is there. Because you know this is a teamwork. I cannot do it individually to move the organization forward. If we are to move the organization forward in order to provide that uh, service to the community out there. In the first year in office, uh, what would you think were your biggest challenges? Challenges? I would say it's almost everywhere. Yeah. Especially out there, externally when we deal with the members of the public, internally, especially our officers that have been implicated for various uh, offenses that is criminal in nature. As I've stated, yeah, challenges are everywhere. It's how we manage these challenges because we do not want to fail to provide that ongoing service to the members of the community. Mm. 
given these challenges you talk about, uh, have you lost sleep over how to handle them? Uh, I would say yes, yeah. You know, when challenges come your way, there's less of sleep that you endure, eh? but it's how you manage yourself. If you can manage yourself day in, day out, and if you look back after 12 months, we have managed ourselves, myself, my team, and the Fiji police force. But yet, as I've said, challenges will still be there. And we will continue this challenge until and unless, if I leave the organization, challenges will still remain. Mm. But it's how we manage these challenges in order to continue to serve the community mm. to the best of our knowledge and abilities. When you wake up in the morning, what is that news you don't want to hear? The news that I, I don't like to hear is when a police officer is implicated for an offense. You know. That really hurts me. And uh, I try my best to compose myself. Whoever is uh, supposed to be handling this case, I call that particular officer, and let the due process take its course. Yeah. If he or she has been found guilty, and I'm sorry to say, whoever this particular officer is, there's no place for him or her in the Fiji police force. Given, given what you've said, how did you handle yourself when you heard what had happened at Totongo with the pilferage of uh, drugs from the station itself? You know, when I heard it, I was very frustrated, you know. I just hoped that I had the powers just to terminate officers like that. but. There are due processes to follow, mm -hmm. and you cannot just terminate any particular police officer just like that. But the due process has taken its course after investigation. They have been identified because of available evidence. So we have noted they have been produced in court, and currently they are in remand. Mm -hmm. So that is the due process. And uh, once the due process completes, and if they are found guilty, you're no longer a member of the Fiji police force. Mm. Given calls for you to clean up uh, officers like this, mm. uh, terminating them immediately is one possibility you might consider if you have the powers to do that? Yeah, if I have the powers and uh, if it's uh, under the police act to give me those powers, then probably that's the way to go. Mm. But uh, I don't want to abuse their powers. Because at the end of the day, when I leave the organization, this thing can come back and haunt me again. Mm -hmm. Because when I was leading the organization, I made those decisions. Eh? But the due process will continue to follow the due process. Mm -hmm. Why do you think uh, your officers do this? Uh, uh, steal exhibits and sell them off? Totongo case and yeah. the case in Nandi? I, I would not, uh, I, I cannot read the mindset of every particular officer. Eh? Probably it's the. You know, the association with people outside the organization that has uh, given them this uh, idea of trying to tamper with uh, whatever evidence that is out there or exhibits. It's, it's within a, police, a particular police officer. It's how they manage themselves, how they see the organization they will work for, plus uh, you know, your own upbringing when you were coming up as a police officer, eh? because we are taught the do's and don'ts of uh, whilst as a police officer. Eh? But for you to come and commit an offense whilst as a police officer, mm. I'm sorry to say, you have no place in the Fiji police force. Uh, is the factor of uh, low pay? Uh, I would not say the factor of low pay, because we have a salary progression policy in place where every two years a particular officer is given that you know you could jump up to a next scale of uh, your pay eh? and uh, as i as i've stated earlier i think it's the association with people outside the organization that has uh, mm -hmm. given this officer that particular greed for money or wanting to have more but they, are, they do not know they are doing things that is illegal and it's against the policies of the Fiji Police Force. 
you seem very calm and collected uh, in answering these questions, uh, Acting Commissioner. Is it correct to say that you don't get angry too often and you do not yell out orders? You know, what's the use of yelling at a particular police officer when uh, a particular police officer is much to me? In fact, if I'm using an aggressive tone or if I'm using a humble tone, that same inf information will be relayed to that particular officer. And uh, he or she that uh, command that is related to should understand, especially when you've done something that is against the policies of the organization. And uh, if you're aggressive or if you're at that humble tone, it's the way that they receive it, you know, they learn to from it. So I'm, I've been much to the office of the Commission of Police, but I've been told at this particular tone. So, you know, it can be, it's a long lasting impression that officer will take. Mm -hmm. yeah. That I have not been uh, yelled at or scolded. But if any police officer is there in front of me, we'll, the due course will take its uh, process eh? mm -hmm. to either investigate or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's unnecessary to yell at a particular mm -hmm. person or a particular police officer if he or she has done something wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, and do all your ACPs and directors know this? Uh, do not yell if you are not supposed to. Yes, they know it because we've been together for the last one year and I've been in the organization for the last 35 years and they know the way that I usually lead my subordinates so they can take the cue from me. Mm. You have been in the administration arm of the Fiji Police Force for long. Uh, 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 when you took office, did you find it difficult to understand uh, how other departments, mm. uh, intelligence, investigations, uh, uh, how, how did they work? Or were you, yeah. were, did you jump right in? You know, I've just stated I've been in the organization for the last 35 years and I'm a career police officer. And uh, with administration, I was uh, even spent few years doing the operations, even in the criminal investigation department. So if you are a career police officer coming up to this position, I don't think so you have difficulties in understanding what's happening in the various uh, units or divisions within the organization. Acting Commissioner, we'll take a short break and after the break we'll talk about current crime trends in Fiji. Thank you. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back, and today we are talking to the Acting Commissioner of Police, Chuki Fong Chiu. Sir, uh, continuing the discussion, uh, uh, can you provide an update on recent uh, crime trends in Fiji, uh, where the Fiji Police Force is busy, uh, starting with, of course, drugs? Yes, uh, thank you again, Anish. Yeah, you know, almost every day in the dailies we see drugs is one of our common enemy not only to the Fiji police force, but to the general population of Fiji. And uh, it doesn't only affect certain individual, but almost every individual that we, and it's, if, as we can see now, it's now been found in uh, secondary schools, primary schools. And uh, those is one of you know, serious crime trend that we've identified. Eh? And apart from that, there are scams too that we are trying to deal with through this M Paisa, I think, platform. But uh, as we go along, we are managing and trying to face all this challenge head on. Mm. Yeah, whoever is found or raised to be conducted, we will continue to do our work yeah, and continue to serve the general public out there. Mm. Politicians have said uh, the drug issue is an uh, epidemic in Fiji. How do we handle it? As Acting Commissioner of Police, 
Oh, what is your assessment? Has it gone out of your hand to handle, mm. or you can still handle it? Over the years, Fiji police has been uh, you know, conducting raids on drugs you know, before other stakeholders came in. But now, I think because of the recent seizure in Nandi, you see a lot of people are talking about it. Yeah. If that seizure was not done, you know, I don't think so, people. But they were talking about it, but not at this current scale that we have now. Eh? Mm. But uh, I leave it to the politicians to say what they want to say. I will not uh, counter what their information. But for us, police will continue to do our work, yeah. despite all the negative issues or comments that is out there. Police will continue to do our service to the best of our knowledge and abilities. Do you need new legislation to help you fight the drug pandemic? I would say yes, especially on the you know, sentencing of uh, suspects that have been identified. Eh? Because uh, if we don't have uh, this sentencing, especially the amount of drugs that is found at a particular person, especially in kilos or then the sentencing tariff should also increase, at least to deter, you know, would be future offenders in uh, involving themselves with drugs. Mm -hmm. On that note, do you think your officers uh, should be armed when going after drug peddlers and those who are planting marijuana? Yeah, you know, over the years, once we contact raid, we have been assisted by people in the community to assist police in uprooting, you know. And this is this effort has been uh, through our community policing efforts mm. that have assisted us in. And uh, if for armed, uh, for police officers to be armed, and if we identify that is a threat out there to the life of police officers while conducting these raids, then we usually get in touch with our colleagues across the road eh, to assist us, especially just to be there, just to assist us. If there's uh, a conflict or confrontation that is life-threatening. Eh? Let me ask again, if there is an option given to you to arm your officers, maybe inspector and above, would you consider that? I would not co consider to arm our officers. Because what we have been doing over the years, we have managed to do it without any, you know, difficulties. Maybe there are difficulties, especially on the terrain, but uh, the raids that has been happening, whilst police arrived at the scene, whoever is the suspect is, has disappeared. Mm -hmm. So I don't think so. We need to arm police officers. Mm -hmm. Because once we, if we are armed, and we don't know in the near future, even these suspects too will be armed. So it's better for us to continue what we have been doing. But if there's near assistance needed, then we'll get in touch with our colleagues from across the road eh, to assist us. Given uh, bullets and guns are found in residences now, is, mm. is that a concern also? It may be a concern, but uh, the, the recent fine I think that is in Nandera, that was uh, when the, that guy was questioned and he said it was given to him as a souvenir by somebody else. But uh, there's ongoing investigation to verify where these uh, bullets and was found from or who gave it to him. But through that investigation will determine mm -hmm. you know, the other way forward. Eh? What steps, uh, Acting Commissioner, are you taking to ensure that the police department is transparent and accountable under your leadership? As I stated earlier, any particular officer that is found, you know, in any, with any criminal offense or even disciplinary offense, will take the necessary course that is available to us. Yeah. And if he or she is found uh, guilty mm -hmm. in a court of law, you have no place in the organization. Mm -hmm. When do you decide uh, a case against the officer is criminal in nature and which one goes to internal affairs? 
usually uh, disciplinary offenses that uh, within the organization goes to our internal affairs. Eh? But sometimes through investigation, it's identified which criminal. So the CID takes over. Yeah. And it goes for police officers, then it goes to the office of the DPP, who further analyze this, uh, the evidence that is been brought over to them. And they'll tell us that, okay, this guy is to be criminally charged. Mm. So we'll take the cue from there. Mm. And you look at uh, over the years, okay, most police officers, okay, the charges are sanctioned by the office of the DPP to keep that, uh, you know, it's transparent, it's open, eh? rather than we make decision internally. Mm -hmm. Given what's available publicly, if uh, previous police commissioners would give orders, terminate him, terminate her, send them home, send him home. Mm. Is that happening now or is that something of the past? You know, what was uh, done by previous commissioners, they came in with their own intent. They thought it was fit to be doing that. But for me, I'll follow the due process, the legal way of uh, if somebody is to be terminated. We'll follow the due process, take them to court and let the court decide. Eh? Mm. What's your view on a military officer holding the position of Commissioner of Police? I don't have any g issues when uh, a military officer holding the, the post of the Commissioner because that was the decision made by the government of the day. Yeah. And whoever comes in here will give our support. Loyal to the chair, eh? because they come in with their own intent and how they saw it fit to lead the organization there. Mm. When you joined the Fiji Police Force uh, uh, 30 odd years ago, compared to now, uh, could you elaborate how professional are police officers now and how professional were police officers then and how was the integrity level back then and now? You know, when we joined way back in uh, the 80s, eh, that time there were no these mobile phones, we did not have it. And uh, the command and control was there. And the respect to command and control, everybody respected, even a corporal giving out command, everybody respected. But as we go over the years, until this uh, very moment, because our intake, people are you know well-educated, these human rights that have come in, that have given them that uh, you know, liberty to speak up, and if there's issues, they speak against it. Yeah. But at our time, we listen to the command. Yeah. If the command says left, everybody goes left. Yeah. You don't question the command. Yeah. You just continue to do what is, uh, and you know, that time we were told, work first, complain later. So, over that years, it has enabled us to grow up in rank and uh, to these uh, senior ranks in the organization eh? because we were molded then to face challenges. But uh, the new generation of police officers, because they have uh, are well educated, they have this human rights that is there, and they'll come up with their issues especially in regards to their right. Mm. Uh, uh, you always issue warnings to criminals, uh, be aware, but uh, in the race to curb crime, uh, how do you assess criminals advancing in this day or range of technological advancement? Is the police falling behind to capture them? Are they ahead of you or are you ahead of them? Mm. I would not say we, who is ahead or who is behind. Eh? But uh, crime nowadays is getting complex because of uh, the way we communicate now eh, through internet. And uh, so whilst we try and uh, manage crime, criminals too are monitoring us, what we are doing on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they have their own groupings too. And uh, whilst they monitor us, we also monitor them. How best to disrupt and distract them from committing crime. Eh? Mm. But uh, it's quite challenging. But we have uh, other stakeholders that is out there that is assisting us. And uh, we cannot work in uh, 
our various silos at the moment. You know, now we have to work in partnership in order to curb crime. Eh? Mm -hmm. Previous commissioners uh, used to have uh, what they call a commissioner's task force, commissioner's strike back team. Mm. Do you have any hidden team like this too? I, I don't have any hidden team, but uh, the divisions that is out there, they manage the... Uh, I don't want to go and micromanage what is been done in the various divisions that is out there. I leave it to the DPCs and the line assistant commissioners and you will note our ACP operations most of the time he's only on the media too that he's talking mm. so that is portfolio mm. so I you know I delegate to him with trust and confidence for him to do that part of his work eh? mm. Commissioner let me ask you what type of situations uh, uh, causes you to feel discouraged feel discouraged yes I always feel discouraged when uh, a policeman is implicated for an offence, eh? and uh, because when a policeman is implicated, you know all the training, education, the finance that we put, you know, to get this particular officer, to recruit that particular officer, and maybe grow up in the organisations to be a better person, but yet when they fall short of that, mm. that usually frustrates me. Mm. Acting Commissioner, what causes you to be anxious? To be anxious? <laughs> While at work, uh, makes you bite on your fingernails. Mm. I, I, always, I don't always feel anxious about things because, you know, I have officers out there in the field to do what they're supposed to do as a police officer and always be a police officer. Eh? And uh, if I feel anxious, then I call a particular, my DCP or ACP, just to discuss issues out. Yeah. Why is this? What is the way forward? Yeah. We do it collectively and make uh, a final decision mm -hmm. so that uh, whatever that is out there, we can minimize it mm -hmm. or even eradicate it. Mm. You said you don't get angry, you don't yell, but do you get irritated? At times, yes, but you, I manage it. Eh? And what are the situations which get you irritated? As I've stated, when police officers are implicated for an offense, this makes me, you know, in the first instance, just like they say, in the spur of the moment, you just want to terminate this particular officer. Mm. Because, you know, the, the image of the organization is tarnished because of one particular officer. So, you know, you're very irritated. You want to make a harsh decision, but you think twice again. The due process is there. Follow the due process. And do you consider the family of the officer uh, in that transaction? Yes, I consider the family. But the officer who committed the offense, did he consider his family? before committing the offense. No, you look at it both ways too. Eh? Mm. And I always tell my officers, we meet every Wednesday, always be careful on the change of uniform. From this uniform to the orange uniform. Mm. Because when I was a young constable, my station sergeant way back in 91, always tell, me, tell us, eh? the officers then, be careful of the change of uniform. So I'm telling my officers too, be careful of the change of uniform. You can be a police officer today. Tomorrow, you'll be in prison. Mm. Acting Commissioner, thank you very much. We'll continue the discussion after a short break. Thank you. We were around when the deed was first signed. We were around when the first car engine roared. We were around when the very first was crowned. Through devastations, jubilant celebrations, and the milestones. We will continue to be around to bring you all the stories first. Welcome back and today we are talking to the Acting Commissioner of Police. Uh, sir, uh, thank you very much. Uh, just one question before we start the thir third segment, the drugs that were seized in 94.1 tons, uh, after that another 1.1 ton. Why isn't the Fiji Police Force getting rid of it, destroying those drugs. Yeah. You know, the intention is to get rid of it, especially destroying it. Eh? 
but uh, we are awaiting the the court order to give us that okay because we just cannot do it like that because th those are exhibits that is there at the moment eh? mm -hmm. and uh, the analysis has been done the weight of it but uh, until and unless the court give us that order uh, the process too is underway already to get uh, I think with, through the office of the DPP and once that order comes away we have it destroyed. Mm. Usually overseas uh, senior police officers are standing in front of the drugs when they are destroyed. Uh, maybe to show the public, yes, we are here, we are doing it, we are destroying it. Mm. Would you consider doing something like that? The acting commissioner of police is igniting the light, the fire to destroy the drug. Yeah, when it comes to that time with the court order in place, then we'll see probably I will be there to light the fire to have it destroyed. Mm. Uh, will members of the public be allowed to come and watch? <laughs> no, no, we won't allow members of public because those are, you know, uh, those are drugs eh, that need to be destroyed and need to be. Mm. And until and unless the last bit of it is destroyed, the police will be remaining there just to see that mm. the process is completed. Mm. Let's touch on corruption in the Fiji Police Force. Uh, do you admit it still exists or? Is it there in the system? I admit it still exists because I receive information from uh, the members of the public that uh, a particular officer has demanded $50 whilst conducting traffic duties on the road. But as I've said, I'll go through the due process. Mm. People come and complain. We take them through, take their statement. If there's evidence out there, because if you ask a particular police officer an allegation, the answer is always no, I'm not involved. But through investigation and if evidence is there, the due process will take its course. Mm. And if you are found guilty, out you go from the Fiji police. Would you consider body cam uh, for police officers who are out there uh, to record all what's happening in front of them? Yes, I would prefer to have body cam. We started off with that, but through our early operations, eh? especially during COVID. Eh? Mm. But uh, to acquire those equipment, it's uh, quite expensive to eh? And uh, that is the way to go in order to, you know, so see that officers are performing their duties to the, the right way. Eh? Mm. Since you took office, have you been offered a bribe? When I took office, I was invited by certain individuals to come, you know. But I told them, if you want to talk business, come and visit me in the office. Yeah. I will not go to your particular place or particular business uh, area to discuss issues, eh? Because I prefer to remain independent. Yeah. And my police officers know that mm. I don't entertain especially going out and meeting especially business people or whoever that is here. I remain independent so when I make a decision or whoever a decision is to be made to against a particular you no know, there and then it's done. Mm. If you commit a crime we take you to task. This person who called you what do you think was the agenda of this person? I, I really do not know the agenda but uh, looking at his background, I just uh, I prefer to stay away mm. and remain independent. Eh? Mm. Any of your other ICPs or directors have reported to you that they have been offered bribes or favors? No, no, at the moment none. But if they have been offered, they usually come and discuss. Eh? And I say, be careful of the oath of service that we. No, undertook that we will serve to the best of our knowledge and abilities without even uh, involving ourselves with corruption. Mm -hmm. and as a career police officer, you should, we should remind ourselves every time. Mm -hmm. Even when we wake up in the morning, remind ourselves, who am I? I'm a police officer. Mm -hmm. These are the do's, these are the don'ts. Mm -hmm. 
you have said uh, you want officers to walk uh, by the books, uh, by the law, but when can they deviate from it to ensure that justice is delivered? Can you just repeat the question? Uh, you have said uh, your officers should walk uh, by the law, by the books, what they've learned, but when can they deviate to ensure that justice is delivered? Deviate from the whatever it from is. From they've been taught. Yeah. I think when they deviate, it's the influence that they get when they associate themselves with the external, you know, apart from police officers and those ideas, those discussion creeps in. Eh? Mm. And that is, I think, the way they, they deviate from their decision to, to, to make a decision that is against, mm. against the values of the Fiji police. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I don't want to uh, paint all the officers with one brush, mm. but if I were given, if, if I were to ask you if current police officers are in the pockets of drug pushers and drug peddlers, would you agree? I agree. Police officers are involved, and a uh, few cases have been reported, a few cases, even the recent cases in Totong. Mm. But it's all under, currently in court. We let the court take its course. Mm. And whatsoever the decision comes from court, then we'll take the way forward from there. Uh, do you have an estimate, percentage-wise, of how many police officers would be on the alleged corrupt list? I would not have any uh, the figures at the moment. But uh, as and when cases are reported, we investigate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as I stated earlier, if you are found guilty in a court of law, you are no longer part of the Fiji Police Force. Acting Commissioner, there is criticism of the Fiji Police Force on social media. Uh, this officer is corrupt. Mm. Uh, uh, there is even uh, talk on social media that the Minister for Home Affairs is running the Fiji Police Force. When do you see this social media commentary? Uh, how do you handle that? You know, whatever is stated in social media, let it remain on social media. Because majority of whatever is stated in social media you know it's it's not the gospel truth yeah. we should not be dismayed or to deter us in carrying our work as a police officer because we have people with opinions perception out there and uh, whatever that is there they they have that they comment mm -hmm. we leave it as it is we continue to do our work do good mm -hmm. and show them that will remain as a police officer and continue to do our work mm -hmm. as a police officer. Some crimes are committed on social media or through social media, the information is there. Is the Fiji Police Force equipped to get evidence through social media to get to a culprit or do you still have to contact somebody in Australia, uh, Facebook office to assist you? Yeah, usually we have our um, bilateral partners. Eh? We have the Australian Federal Police, or the New Zealand police that assist us in, uh, but sometimes whatever information that we picked up from social media, you know, we reanalyze it again to see how genuine is this information. If it we think that it uh, it fits, that it's genuine, then probably we'll take it up from there. But we need more verifications. Eh? Mm -hmm. And for Facebook, yeah, usually we write uh, across to abroad to get uh, to verification of all this information. Eh? And now cybercrime unit is uh, handling all these things, but it's quite uh, challenging to to understand all these things that is happening, especially through social media. Mm. Acting Commissioner, uh, how would you describe your relationship with the Fiji military forces? Uh? Our relationship is good. Yeah. We've been uh, meeting with them, you know, on social socializing, yeah. even during the Skuna Bowl. There's no issue with our relationship with the military. Mm. Uh, what is the commander's perception of the Fiji Police Force? I, I would not know his perception, but uh, I leave it to him, whatever his perception is. Mm. Mm. If you were offered a, the position of commissioner mm. of police, would you take it? At the moment, already performing the work of the Commissioner of Police, eh? mm. but I won't give it a yes or no. I leave it 
when the day comes and the time that is right, then we'll take it on from there. Acting Commissioner of Police, thank you very much for sitting down with me and answering our questions. Now, I do.